level 10. Hey, what's going on, everyone? So that was me you've just saw on D1, Beta 1, getting level 10 for the first time in Icarus. Crazy to think that is over a year ago now. We're actually coming up to a year of Icarus's anniversary now of uh, the week 53 patch coming this Friday. It's crazy to think that I've been playing this game a year now. It's actually uh, flown over quite a bit. So, why am I doing this video? Simply because I try not to do in-depth reviews of games unless I physically got the knowledge and know what I'm talking about. Some people like to put reviews out after five hours of playing a game. Uh, this this is my one-year Icarus review. Where can I where can I start? I started in beta one, D one. Got my level ten, which you've just saw. Um, and I haven't looked back since. There have been some uh, interesting moments along the way, I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, I've been critical of the game, but I've always been critical of this game. But give my feedback on why and what could be improved. I'm not someone who will be critical of a game and just say this game sucks. I'll go, okay, could you add this? Could you fix this? Or, you know, is that a solution and stuff like that? And... The devs do listen. It might have taken them a while to appear to everybody that the devs are listening, but the devs do listen. I know that. I know that from just like personal experience. You know, I don't know because I've got a little bit of a voice as a content creator or whatever that is. So, for example, how the devs are listening to community feedback and ideas is when I heard that open world mode was coming. I talked to my community on my live stream about ideas what they could implement to make open world even better like for example i say there should be like a terminal we could be able to craft or something like like a high tier terminal or something like that where we could interact with and we could pick missions from now at the time my thinking was open world mode and regular missions which you could just uh, pick from like a like a, a terminal screen obviously that evolved into what dynamic missions are now now i'm not just saying it, it was my idea but i will just leave this on the screen for you so i'll let you make your own judgment though so where do i begin the launch definitely had teething issues and and a lot of people were put off and i i look at the steam chart all the time i'm, a, I'm like a graph nerd and a number nerd you know, I think you kind of got to be a little bit uh, as a content creator um, for obvious reasons. I like to look at the numbers who's playing Icarus because I, I genuinely do love this game and I want it. To, I want this game to do well, which I'm really happy with some of the new features that have come in, come into the game recently, which I'll get into in a minute. So if you're a new player coming into Icarus, you have a ton of content now to keep you busy, like for a very long time. Put it this way. You have missions, you have your outpost mode, and you have the open world mode. There's dedicated servers as well for the game, so you can actually have your own dedicated server or host your own dedicated server and play with friends and stuff or in a closed community on there, up to eight people. So if you are like a returning player and you haven't played for a very long time, there are two maps now. So you have like Olympus, the original starting one, which still, in my opinion, has the best missions on it. And you also have Styx map, which has its own separate missions. This, the Styx map itself is beautiful. I like it better than the Olympus one, but I like the Olympus missions better than the Styx ones. And I have only done a handful of the Styx missions. I'm just not a fan of them. Uh, I don't know what it is about them. They just don't rub me the right way. So if it's any criticism regarding that, it's I'm not as geared towards doing the sticks missions because I just don't find them as fun. But the Olympus ones I do find fun, but I don't enjoy the map as much. So yeah, it's like a trade-off, you know. Do you like the map more or the missions more? But I like the missions more, and that's more of an important thing for me. Hence why I spend all of my time on Olympus. Again, if you're a returning player, outposts haven't really changed. They always still respawn. And you still got your tiny little bit of parcel of land to build on. So you have the Arkwood, you have Ice Home, and you have Hold Fast still. These are the outposts that you want 
to be using if you're into just small builds with respawning ores and I'm talking a tiny little parcel of land here now obviously you've got your missions this is where you're going to be either doing your Olympus missions or your sticks missions so this is them they haven't changed this is where you're going to be getting your exotics from to buy stuff on the workshop to basically what you can drop down with so like your environmental suits your miners and armors and so forth next up is your open world mode now this is basically a huge open world map with either olympus or sticks you can either play on either so fundamental changes to this though compared to outposts is is you've got the full map you get access to all the caves and you can play it on easy normal and hard i'd recommend bender playing it on just minimum normal so you get all of the hostile creatures along with cave worms and the open world bosses the roaming world bosses that are roaming the world unless you have a boss tracker module in your environmental suit or the talent unlock to see world bosses on the map so this is going to be the module you're going to need the world boss module here or the talent unlocked the other fundamental changes uh, and differences between the three options you've got to play the game basically but yeah open world mode always don't respawn so once you've cleared a cave out as the as of recording this video you cannot get respawnable ores in open world mode and you can't get exotics in open world mode and in my opinion that's great i think exotics should be left on missions and missions alone if you're a new player to the game completely fresh you have months worth of game time to play here for the for the price of the game the time recording this is like 27 pounds you get a lot of content for that which wasn't there at launch so you get a significant bargain in my opinion if you want to get this game now especially with having dedicated servers and open world mode now and bear in mind there is a game patch every single week at this point there has never been a week missed of this game getting patched on a friday every week if you're a returning player and you haven't played in a while you've got some stuff to catch up on you've got open world mode if you haven't checked that out more important features that have been added is the mount there is a moa and buffalo mount like i'm talking new workstations I'll jump into my game world now and I'll show you all the workstations that are currently available in Icarus. I'm not going to show you them all because this is quite a new build I'm working on here. So I don't have them all but I do have all of the latest stuff. So some of the biggest changes over the past few months is the updated textiles benches. There's different variants of them now. So there's, this is the highest tier textiles bench you can get. Because you can craft higher tier leather armor now which is called cured leather armor and you also can go and get the wayfarer armor as well which is introduced new items like platinum weave so these are better versions of the cloth armor and i'm actually wearing the wayfarer's armor right now so it looks pretty badass it's probably the best looking armor in the game now not gonna lie and the alteration bench so this is where if you craft your armor weapons tools anything you crafted down on the planet you can alter so you can put a stat on there which will increase that piece of gear this now you can't do this with workshop stuff you brought down from the the space station this is only stuff craftable on the planet now for example this is a tr2 alteration bench so you can craft tr2 alterations and tr1s now, so what happens is you'd, you'd put your item in here you want to alter. So anything with a square next to it like this, you can alter. You can put an alteration in it. And this is what it looks like with an alteration in it. This one has a Platinum Smith 1, so plus 25% yield from mining Platinum on my pickaxe. So you, what you do is you just place it in here, your item, and you would place the alteration on here and you'll be able to alter it and then give it that you can take the alterations out at any time on this bench and as long as it's powered and then it's good you get uh, you can just swap stuff over also one of the biggest changes were to glass to glass because glass used to break quite easily and now if you hook water up to a glass working bench you can get basically 
it's the same recipe, but it's hardened glass. It's reinforced glass. So it just gets a glow around it, and this can be resistant to all weather types. So it doesn't break. It's basically on par with stone at this point. And this is a very new addition, actually, is the repair bench. Now, you can repair everything here. It does require power, but you also can repair your workshop items here as well. As long as you have the workshop repair kits from the workshop. So you'll have to drop down with these, and you're able to repair stuff. Yeah. Another brand new addition to the game is the fortifications, which got added in the week 52 patch. So you get the gate, like so. Also, you do get the wooden wall, along with these spikes you can place on the front of them. So this is particularly good for the doing, like, the geyser horde mode uh, event. And... Just basic, basic defences which help in dynamic missions and open world mode as well. But obviously these all have their uses in regular missions. And for you cooking enthusiasts out there, there is now a tier 4 kitchen set up. So you get the sink, the storage and the stove and all of that good stuff. Same as the tier 3 variant, but this is better. This can store more and do more on them so you don't need any more additional cooking stands and you can do your pills and stuff on here as well. Next up is the short range radio. So this thing here is what you're going to need to do the dynamic missions on open world mode and these are pretty self-explanatory so once you craft this in tier 2 you will have to unlock it via a blueprint and these are only usable on open world mode by the way. Um, you will press F on it and you'll get a screen up like this. And it's RNG between easy, normal and hard mode missions and it'll cycle through missions like mining, hunting, farming and various other stuff like that. And ID tags from fallen prospectors you've got to find in the world. Now, the good thing about dynamic missions are they are RNG and you do get some good missions from them. But the best thing about them is they are always local to your base area. So, for example, I'm in L12, yeah, on this tiny little island. This is where my base is, and it's always within this general area here, and it's always highlighted on the map of the location anyways. So, it's always close, and it's super handy, and the vast majority of them can be generally done under 10 minutes, and you get rewarded with three optional rewards at the end of completing it. So when you complete the mission, a little drop pod will come down and you'll be able to pick your reward. Sometimes it can be really good, sometimes it can be really bad. You can get workbenches, you can get really high tier food, or you might get absolute crap. It really is literal RNG. I'd highly recommend giving Dynamic Missions a shot though, guys, because it is really good fun. And it's my, now my mode of content for my live streams and doing off stream as well. Just while I'm on open world mode, I like to like quickly uh, trigger a couple, like trigger a Dynamic Mission and then go off and do it and come back and then crack on. It just breaks it up nicely a little bit. Next up is the Water Wheel. The Water Wheel got added. This is a power generation item. Now, it does produce 2,000 power, but it's got to be placed at, like, the base of a waterfall. So, just before it drops down, and, yeah. It generates 2,000 power, and this is what it looks like. So, I built this structure around it to give it a bit more of an aesthetic feel. So, it doesn't come like this. This is just one of them. I know one's moving in the opposite direction. I had to do it like that just so I could uh, fit them both in here. And they still work, so who cares? That is the water wheel, a very nice addition which got added uh, recently as well in a recent patch. So after me talking and showing you just a small fraction of some of the cool things that have been adding Icarus, would I recommend this game to you now? If you are if you already own Icarus and you haven't played in a while, yes, come back, check it out. You will definitely have your money's worth now. If you're a new player who's looking for a survival game or just a new game in general to check out and you're interested in Icarus for £27, that's how much it costs in the UK. You are getting a hell of a lot of content, which is going to keep you busy for a long time. I'm kind of actually jealous because <laughs> me paying what I did at the time and getting, I didn't feel like I got that much. I'll be honest. I'm kind of jealous because if you're getting the game now, you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot and you're getting your weekly patch as well. You know, it's not always packed full of content, but it's improvements on the game. It's always improvements. So yes, I would recommend the game to, for returning players and brand new players.
Now, like I say, I've got over a year's experience on this game to give you that informed personal opinion. If you've got the money and you're looking for a game, check out Icarus. I'm not sponsored to say that. Like I say, I've held off doing a review for Icarus for a year now. So all I can say is going into year two, guys, the devs are going to love this. I'm going to be remaining critical of your game. But I will give uh, constructive criticism with ideas all the time. I won't be a jackass. Yeah, I look forward to year two to see what that entails. More DLC. Hopefully, paid DLC soon. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you do want to support me, though, if you got this far, I'll leave a link down in the pinned comments to my Ko-Fi page where you can become a member. Bunch of perks on there. More perks on there and what I can offer on YouTube. So... If you want to go down there, check that out and check out the tiers. Or for free, you can like, subscribe to the channel. And that greatly helps as well. I'm very grateful for all your support this year, guys. And I really do look forward to year two of playing Icarus Reviews. And uh, yeah, good times. Leave a comment down below what you thought. And are you a returning player? Let me know down in the comments. Did this video entice you to come back? Maybe? Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you all again very soon.